Hey peeps. So other YouTubers, you tell me, do you sit down to film a video and then instantly you gotta go pee? You've got itchies all over your head. You've got the wiggles. Your cats are screaming at the door. Please tell me I am not alone in this. I have a doozy for y'all. Gotta get into my phone. I have been scrolling the Reddit because what else is a girl to do at 4.30 in the morning when she can't sleep because she's restless? If you like to read along with me, I will have pictures probably in this corner. I gotta figure out where to leave space. Otherwise, pop me in the background and just listen. It's a long one and oh, I'm telling you, editing this is going to be a nightmare. So let's get into it, shall we? This is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance. If you are not joined to that forum, you will not regret it. There are some doozies in there, and this is one of them. It's titled, Okay then, I'll deal with it myself. I won't mention any names due to being right into it right now. The story is as follows. I think it qualifies. I went into a local cannabis dispensary to get a dual cartridge CBD THC vape pen that was rechargeable to check out. I am in cancer treatment recovery and use CBD THC to help with muscle soreness on longer rows of 10 km and the product seemed to fit all the boxes for me. It was 60 bucks. I didn't have time to try it out that day and the next one I took a few vapes and it didn't seem to be working. I plugged it into a USB-C cable into my laptop. The device did not come with one, and went back to working right next to it. A few minutes later, I notice a smell of burning wire and look down, and the disposable device is burning a hole in my desk, and smoke is coming out the end with the charger on it. The distillate was bubbling and vapor pouring out the top. I removed it from the charger and let it cool down outside for a few minutes, and then headed back to the dispensary. I explained the situation to the clerk and said it was smoldering and reeked of electrical wire burning, and he said it sounded like user error to him, and I should try a different charger for it. He said that they have had multiple people with this issue, and it was always the same thing. He told me to take the device, which is a fire hazard at this point, and plug it back in, and it will be just fine. I asked him to write the instructions on the back of my receipt just for clarification, and I left with the pen, the vape pen, by the way. So I come home again, get a different charger, and plug it back in again to the same result, but this time I recorded it with my phone and head back to the store again. The clerk refused the return and said there was about 20% of the product missing, and perhaps I just vaped it and couldn't afford another. He did offer me 10% off on another order, he said I was free to contact his manager if I wasn't satisfied, and I could deal with it myself. I took the receipt and the pen, and I came home, and I did just that. I first hit the corporate website of the Canadian company, which is highly regulated by federal and provincial cannabis regulations in my country, and found the CEO and noted his email address. I then figured out the distributor for the child safety protection housing for the device in question and noted his email address as well. Next was the email address to report faulty and defective devices to Health Canada, as well as the regulatory branch of the Consumer Product Protection Agency as well. I sent them all a very factual email stating nothing but facts, and I included conversations telling me as a consumer to apply more electricity to an obviously defective device, as well as stating that a corporation with multiple reports of a faulty device are legally obligated to report and follow a lengthy investigation when situations like this occur in this industry. It's highly regulated and for a reason. I even sent video. I finished everything off at about 11 p.m. last night, and I sat back and I waited. I have a 16-year-old son who knew of this situation, and on the way to school this morning, we discussed it. And he bet me 20 bucks that no one would call about it, and I should just let it go. I decided that it would go the other way instead. About 9.30 a.m., I get an email from the Indigenous Cannabis Producers PR Department stating that she was escalating my concerns and someone would be contacting me shortly. I also received another email shortly after from the COO of the Child Protection Safety Device Distributor, and she and the CEO wanted to discuss the situation with me as well. 
A call followed with the COO and CEO of the distributor device maker as this shit was now getting real for them. Knowing everyone that needed to know, now knew, and an investigation was imminent. I shared everything with them and a call is being set up with the Chinese manufacturer to ask me questions about the device and circumstances of the failure and I agreed to that as well. Lastly, the distributor offered to come by this afternoon to pick up the device which is sitting safely outside in a box as I was instructed to do by the consumer safety branch here in Ontario. She said she would include a few products and some swag for my efforts. Sadly, the retail store hasn't said a word, which leads me to believe that they really don't give a shit, or else they're too scared to call me back. Hmm. As for my kid, I'm getting 20 bucks, and he learns a valuable lesson of sometimes it's the principal over the $60 device. I suspect the staff won't be telling anyone else to look after things themselves. Dispensary rhymes with Flash & Co, and they need to teach their staff some manners in dealing with customers who they think are all potheads trying to rip them off for 10 bucks worth of THC vape. P.S. No, I did not steal or attempt to profit by the dispensary's ink pens. This was a THC CBD vape pen. I am not a monster. <laughs> Edited. Lots, as everyone thought I was stealing big pens and trying to recharge said pens. <laughs> that, still, that still cracks me <laughs> okay, so she's talking about a THC CBD vape pen, <laughs> not, not a writing utensil. <laughs> so let's just clarify that. And so we come into this first set of comments where the original poster responds back to a lot of comments with updates. So I'm going to go ahead and read them off because this situation, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's not great, but... What the, orig what the original poster did is great. How she handled it is beautiful. She is my hero. From Schrodinger's New Cat, I love that username. As you were running through the list of people, my oh shit kept getting louder. As an American, even I know not to fuck with Canadian regulatory agencies. I worked in med device for a long time. Health Canada regulations are no joke. They are no joke. Like, they are, Canada is stricter than America. Just saying. So the original poster, right? This ship moves fast. I am now in an email thread with Chinese manufacturer to flush out a time for a QA period with distributor and battery pod manufacturer. The indigenous cannabis provider of the raw product is calling me tomorrow to get my side of the equation as it's their products inside those pods in a faulty device. I believe the retailer will be questioned about not reporting instances of faulty products to both the regulatory agency and the distributor of the products as they said they were not aware. Will be interesting what they bring to my house in the next hour or two as the COO is coming by personally. I'm gonna try to say this username. I, mm, I'm probably gonna butcher it. Sorry. Oh, so, 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 so. Anyway, can't believe the shop trying to call it user error. USB-C is a standard. If the plug fits into it, it needs to handle the potentially 120 V that the plug is able to deliver, even if it's a case of not charging at all. That's what standards are, are for, to avoid nasty surprises. And this is a nasty surprise. Um, original poster states, exactly, so many people think these devices don't go bang bang and give you big owies, but they do. I was somewhat surprised it didn't come with its own charger, but I guess they wanted to save some money. A situation like this could burn your house down. Yeah, I'm, I was thinking when he was like, try a different charger, why didn't the pen come with the charger? Um, our, my local dispensary, they sell chargers for their pens. Like they have a brand of pens and those, they sell chargers that are from the same brand or recommended by the brand, I guess. So you, know, when you're saying try a different charger, even I'm going, what, why didn't it come with one? Do you, do you sell a charger for it? Um, anyway, also let's go with that. 
Yeah, for the device to be USB-C compliant, you would be able to plug a Mac charger into it, 120V over USB, and it would have no problem. Either it would not allow a connection, or it would charge just fine without catching fire. Failure mode should never be fire, unless there's something actually wrong with it, which would never be user error, unless user was doing something they shouldn't, like strip the insulation off or do twist and tape repairs or something. I will say this. I'm noticing a lot of companies, it's not just MLMs, MLMs are notorious for this, but a lot of companies in general are real quick to say, are you sure you'd use the product properly? And you as a consumer are sitting here going, yes, I use the product properly. What did you want me to do, shove it up my butt? Exactly, right? I'm hardly an electrical engineer, but was shocked at his suggestion that it was my fault at first. The frantic email from the COO at, I'm, she says 10 a.m., but I think she meant 10 p.m., when most are probably sleeping, reinforced this fact for me as well. I immediately unplugged it from my MacBook and tried it with a garbage PC, and it did nothing. I suspect it was fried at that point, although the lights still worked. Close-ups of one of the new devices they dropped off are here. She did say that they were looking at a design change to get the switch on the side. Whether this is true or not, I guess I'll find out. Just like sloppy code, having two variants that close together is just asking for it, but that's just me. I'm not a product designer. This has been brought up in lawsuits in the past, though. This, the how close USB chargers can be, the universal, for example, the universal to the mini, they're very, very similar. And things have caught fire because you were, people were using the wrong chargers, but they didn't know any better. So that's, I'm, I'm, I'm with the original poster here. That's a legit concern. So Nixie Vixie states, wait a minute, I want to understand correctly. Did the cannabis producer whose product is in the cartridge drop off additional cartridges? Okay, so here's the picture of what they dropped off. And yeah, I agree that's a little confusing. Okay, so back to the post. It would make sense for them to be proud of their cannabis product and provide you cannabis in a form that didn't rely on the compromised cartridge. But if their form of being nice and or polite was to bring you a additional cartridges. That seems objectively stupid. Thanks for any clarifying information you can provide and a big pat on the back. Sounds stupid, but I mean it genuinely for your efforts to call out this obviously dangerous cartridge situation. Yes, they gave me two of the same all-in-one cartridges and said they hoped they were okay. I suspect it was a one-off faulty product. They also included other vape products and different configurations and infused pre-roll packages 510 batteries, etc. It was the vape cartridge distributor who came over and not producer. Distributor sources devices, fills devices with distillates, and handles all regulation and supply chain in OCS. And then pick in comments as well. And she, I'm going to scroll through them right now. There's a pretty scary situation. Like that's, I would be freaking out if that, if that happened with a vape pen. I don't vape, but still, that's absolutely faulty product. Totally faulty product. The fact that the store was unwilling to just do a refund, that's so frustrating because ultimately it's just bad business for them. You know, she's now made all of these reports, all of these phone calls, emails, and What's going to come of it? Well, the store is probably going to get forced to do new management if they don't get made close. They're, it's regulated heavily for a reason, and it's for reasons like this that cannabis is so heavily regulated. So um, Nixie Vixie responds back with, Thanks, OP, for your informative response. It makes sense that, it, that the distributor is dropping off more of their product since they're the one whose product fucked up and need to hope the issue is a one-off product situation. I'm weirdly pleased to know the grower producer wasn't trying to placate you with another possibly crap cartridge. Still wishing you all the best in your journey to hold the corporate bullshit systems accountable. And this is where I chose to end it because it just kind of goes <laughs> goes into some odd little little side conversations here that I didn't think were necessary to read off. But the original poster gave quite a few updates in that and just wow. Like I said, that's original poster. You you were kind of my hero. 
You knew all the people to contact. You knew everything you had to do. Just awesome. Totally phenomenal. And that's this video. It's... I, I was complaining it was going to be longer, but I guess it's it's not really longer. It's you know, about average. But nonetheless, if you like this type of content, hit that subscribe button. I would say hit the red subscribe button, but it's black for me now. Is it black for anyone else? Cool. Thanks for noticing. And um, leave comments down below. Hit the like button. Anything you can do to trick the algorithm into popping my videos out there. I am doing a lot of just random content right now. I'm kind of throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. So bear with me as I figure out my niche or my preferences or whatever. I am learning with you all. So thanks for hanging out and I will see you again.